it's Rebecca from the Stony Room Me. Uh, so I have quite a little bit to say today. So I'm doing a vlog and a blog. Though the blog may possibly go up tomorrow, depending on if I get my essay submitted. Uh, it just depends on timing because I want to sleep as well. One of those things. Um, so I've got some funny stuff and some exciting stuff. It's a little mix of both. And I'm going to start with funny stuff. Uh, so about two weeks ago, and I'm sorry it's taking me this long to get to it, uh, I was on a bus home because I needed, I had a hospital appointment. Um, and it's about an hour and 20 minutes this bus ride. And I met an amazing girl um, who tapped me on the shoulder. I was happily mis like listening to some music. I have to admit it might have been Disney. Um, so she taps me on the shoulder and goes, are you Rebecca? And I'm just like, who are you? And it turns out that she'd read my uh, Cosmo articles, um, which I'll put a link to in the description box. And she's like, oh, yeah, I read them and I re read your blog, I've subscribed. Um, and I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome as well. And she had a different type, there were 10 types. Um, but because of this, she'd been following. She went, I just have to ask, like, you obviously have no problem talking about sex. Um, uh, you know, you wrote two articles pretty much on it. Now, I must say, the articles weren't just about sex. They were also about dating and sex. Um, and she was like, you obviously don't have a problem talking about it, so why is there no sex in your blogs? Um, <laughs> as you can imagine, I was really taken back, and I wish someone had taken a picture of my face, because how would you, how, how like, seriously, how do you respond to this on a bus? And this little old lady in front of us turns around, and she's just like, can't talk about this on a bus and I and seriously because of that I was just like we can we can totally talk about this um and I feel like I need to address this the, the main reason I have not blogged about my sex life is because my mother reads and shares my blog my mother does not need to know about my sex life she does not know if it exists or does not exist quite simple. I have a very, very good relationship with my mum. It's very open, she's very supportive. I can phone her up and be like, I hate dystonia, I hate this, guys suck. Guys, you don't suck, you're amazing, I promise you. But sometimes you do. It just depends on whether I've had a crappy date or not. I'm really sorry, but you probably say the same about girls. You probably don't like me, right? But I'm just being honest. So I could do that. Or I can phone my mum and be like, I've been on an amazing date. This guy is fantastic. You know, I want to go on another date with him. That doesn't happen very often. Let's just be honest, it really doesn't. You know, one day it will. One day it will. I might go into a bookshop. Let's hope it's a bookshop. Got a little bookshop. I might go into one and we might meet over like this amazing book. We might, we might be like, there might be one left, and you know, you know how you, you th your eyes would meet across a room, except for in this case, your eyes would meet across a book. It's the dream. I have very weird dreams. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can come home about that. She's not going to know about my sex life, but so that's simply why I haven't vlogged about it. Um, so here's my compromise, because just not gonna vlog about my sex life. I can't. I will happily write articles for other things. So like Cosmo and other magazines like that. I do not mind doing it for them. Because that's that's different. It 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 just is, okay? Um so my compromise is is that I, when I go on dates, it's just hilarious, basically. The number of times I have thrown my drink down my date or I've hit my date in the face. Not deliberately, I must add. I'm not I'm not assaulting my date. It's just the fact that I have dystonia and if I've not thought going on a date, I should probably strap my arm up because that's not the sexiest look. I would rather look nice for my date. Um, but if I've not thought, oh, you know what, let's be sensible. Because let's face it, it's me, I'm not. Uh, the number of times I've twitched and my arms flung out 
and I've not thought to say, hey, look, I like you, I don't want to hurt you, can you stand on my right side, please? It's just a disaster. Most of the time, they will laugh it off, they will understand. Every now and then, you get one who's just like, what are you doing? And I have to explain. Normally, I've already explained and they've just forgotten. But it's very awkward. So what I will do is I will blog about these, because since I've been at uni, I've gone on a lot of dates. It's fantastic. I love uni. And there are some absolutely hilarious tales I can tell you. So, that is my compromise. I will blog about this. It will probably be a frequent thing. So, you will get more blogs on this. It will be funny. I will be embarrassed. Eventually I'll get over that. We will all have a laugh. I will change the names of the guys. And where we've gone. So, it will be fictionalised in that sense so that you will not be able to identify who I've gone out with. Because, let's face it, unless it goes somewhere, they don't want to know. They're not going to want to know. And if it's not gone well, we should be nice about it. And we all know how I write. But it'll be good fun. So we're going to do that. On another note, again, this might have been two weeks ago. Might have been a week and a half. And I will put the link in the subscription box below it somewhere down there. Um, I was... In, I was on the BBC, it was on BBC Three Counties, um, they were doing a article, not an article, a like a segment on dating when you're stable. Ta-da! Um, so they had George Dowell, who I think he was on the Undateable show that week, um, and he, he, he was talking about being on it and everything, and they had me on. <laughs> now, I think everybody knows my views on this. I don't like the undateables. I really don't like them. Um, but I, I need to address this. I didn't say it on air. And before I'd done this interview, I'd had emails about it. And I've never, I don't think I've ever said this. If I have, bear with me. Um, I, I'm, it just annoys me. People think... And a lot of people think that I apply to be on the undateables. Um, and don't therefore get why I was insulted about them talking to me. That's not the case. I never, ever, 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 ever applied to be on the undateables. And I would not. Mainly because they're called the undateables. I have so many issues with that name. So many. Um, I simply opened my emails one day. Because I have an email account for my blog. Uh, it's on my blog. If you if you want to contact me, you can simply scroll down to a contact me section. There it is. Drop me a line. I will respond. Um, yeah, so one day I open my emails and there's this email going, hey, we met this, this lovely lady with dystonia in Portsmouth in a pub. She didn't want to be on our show. We really want someone with dystonia on our show. Found you. Um, you're not in the area we're actually filming. But we would love to have you on. What do you say? It was probably a little bit more formal than that. Um, now, I don't know about you, but can you imagine just opening your emails and being like, "When, when did, when did I become undateable? Like, when did that happen? When someone has simply gone on Google, typed in dystonia, and gone, oh." Look at this girl's blog, look at her photo. Oh, look at everything that's wrong with her. She's not dateable. Someone has slapped a label on me. No. Just, just no. So I, I replied being like, thank you for your email. I'm not interested. This is why. They asked me like, if I wasn't interested for contact details or someone who would. So I was like, this is the web address for the Dystonia Society, contact them. I don't know if they ever did. I wasn't going to give them anyone's actual um, phone number. Like, I wouldn't, if, so, if someone did that for me, I would be, I would not be happy. And so I was like, contact the Dystonia Society, I don't know, they might be able to help you. Um, and they had replied saying, thank you, uh, we're sorry you're not interested. When you change your mind, I'm sorry, when? Uh, here are our details. No, I'm not going to change my mind. Ever. 
don't you dare label me as undateable. Fair enough if you want to like say, we're really interested in your condition. Would you be, would you even consider this? Not, hey, we'd like to have you. The wording was wrong. The wording was so wrong. This show's name's wrong. There's just, there's just so much wrong with it. So much. However, saying that, they are my personal issues. My personal. And that, that's, that's key. I am not going to put my issues on anybody else. George Dowell, who was on BBC Three Counties before me, um, he was extreme. He, he was on the Undateables, and he was extremely interesting to listen to. Now, I will happily acknowledge that the Undateables works for some people. I'll happily acknowledge that, and if it works for you, that's fantastic. It doesn't resolve my issues with the show. I don't think it does anyone any good. But you know, I don't speak for everybody, so I only speak for me. You'll see. Now, this week, I'm going to be going down to the BBC Studios. I had a phone call last week asking if, at the end of this week, I would go down to do a pre-recorded segment on disability and dating. Now, that's going to be fun. <laughs> I am very, very excited. I feel sorry for them because I'm having my... Botox injections on Wednesday um, so towards the end of the week when I've got to go down I'm going to be spasming it will be very sore for my injections but I'm so excited and it's going to be so worth it it's going to knack me <laughs> but it's going to be great fun I'm really looking forward to it because when, when am I going to get the opportunity to do this again I, like, I'm jumping at this like it's a great advocacy opportunity um, so it's going to be really good fun and it will be great. So I will be doing another blog or vlog or both about it. Um, yeah, so that will be good. I will be going strapped up so that I don't twitch and knock anything over. And my trusty, don't you just love it? It's so gorgeous. I love it. It's my trusty pink walking stick. I mean, if you need a walking stick, you have to have a pink polka dot one. It just is after my own heart. I don't need it all the time, but well, after I've had my injections, I really do, because my brain just does not work. Um, so that will be coming with me. I'm going to take some photos to put on the blog so you can all see what I get up to. So that will be good fun. Yeah. So I will update you all then and I will start doing my funny blogs about dating. Yeah. So we will see.